Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing the last video on the B650 series that I've kind of been doing um, for the last couple of videos. So today we're going to be looking at ASUS. So we're doing ASUS last because ASUS, ASUS takes the longest to figure out how their motherboards are crafted in terms of the block diagram because their manuals do not feature the block diagram. I basically have to derive them by reading through the manuals and the spec sheets. So just like with my other three videos, so we covered Gigabyte, ASRock, and MSI in previous videos, each dedicated to those vendors. Now we're gonna be looking specifically at ASUS and their B650 line. Um, now I know they have several options from the B650 chipset, um, but for what we're gonna do today, we're gonna focus on three specific motherboards. All are going to be ATX form factor because ATX is typically the most volume sales in terms of the most commonly purchased one for PC DIY. Just like with the previous videos, I'm going to do a budget option. So kind of a, you know, possibly sub $200 option. So that's this one. That's going to be the ASUS Prime B650 Plus. So this one's just around $200. Um, but at the time of filming, Newegg does have a $20 off promo code that would drop this down to $179. So that's the Prime. We're going to look at that one first. And then we're also going to look at the Tough, which is the middle of the road. And then the flagship B650E, which would be the Strix B650E-E, so an extreme version. So to start off, let's go ahead and look at the Prime B650 Plus. So their product page uh, does kind of give you a general overview of what it offers in terms of the product uh, but what I like to do is just go straight into the in depth into the block diagram so I've provided that here for you guys and I know a lot of people um, do like these breakdowns of how the motherboard is laid out because it does make it much easier to figure out what the motherboard can and cannot do so in the case of the prime b650 plus uh, it is standard B650 in the sense that it does offer a single M.2 Gen 5 drive. As you can see that there. So it's going to be the primary M.2 slot. So M.2 underscore 1. Uh, and then the second one is going to be also off of the CPU. Um, but it's going to be a 4.0 bus. So for B650, the CPU has 24 lanes. Four of those lanes are going to be Gen 5. The remaining... 20 lanes are going to be Gen 4. That is the standard for B650. If this was a B650E motherboard, all 24 of these CPU lanes would be Gen 5. So that's the key differentiation between those two. So for the graphics card slot, you know, 16 lanes doesn't share anything. So that's really nice. So it's always going to be operating at X16. Uh, and then you have, you know, the four remaining lanes for the uh, second M.2 drive. So that's going to encompass the CPU lanes. You do also get a display port and an HDMI uh, for running monitors off of the integrated graphics. So that's really nice. Uh, and then moving on to the chipset. So the chipset's broken out into two different lane allocations. So you have eight lanes of Gen 4, and then you have four lanes of Gen 3. That's how it is for every B650 chipset. So we count them up here. So ASUS is providing on this Prime Plus, they have four lanes of PCI Gen 4, and that's electrically X4. I think it, it's physically an X16 slot, but it's only electrically four lanes. But that's just fine because that's perfect for a 4K60 capture card um, or a, a Thunderbolt add-in card. So you can add Thunderbolt 4 to this motherboard and ASUS does include the Thunderbolt header um, for that. Uh, and then you get two X1, I kind of think of these as like legacy because you can't really do a whole lot with these, but you get two X1 PCIe slots, still nice to have. Um, uh, and then there is a an M.2 E key port here, which is used if you wanted to add Wi-Fi. So this particular model does not include Wi-Fi. Some people won't care, um, but others, you know, they just kind of want all the bells and whistles just there, or kind of like all the checkboxes, and Wi-Fi is just kind of a checkbox uh, metric uh, in the spec sheet, but this one does not include Wi-Fi. 
Um, but if you wanted to add it, the E key is there. So normally the Wi-Fi would be wired up to this lane, um, but in this case it's it's an open slot. Uh, and then there is the final lane for the 2.5 gigabit LAN connection there. So that's it for the 4.0 bus. And then for the 3.0 bus, it's pretty straightforward. Each SATA port gets its own lane. So very simple design, no as media chips, no splitting of one PCIe lane into two SATA ports. So they've done it very kind of basic uh, on here. So that's basically it for the Prime. Uh, it's a pretty stra standard layout, I would say. Uh, not a whole lot else here. There's probably, most likely there is a plus Wi-Fi that includes the Wi-Fi module down here. Uh, but let's move on to the the middle of the road one here. So I chose the Asus Tough Gaming B650 Plus. And this one, I did choose the Wi-Fi one. Actually, I think there's only is the Wi-Fi one. Uh, but this one is kind of middle of the road, you know, at $239, so $240. Um, that's not too bad price-wise, considering the price of electronics these days. Um, but this one, let's go ahead and look at the block diagram. So if we bring that over, uh, not a whole lot different from the Prime Plus, though there is one key difference. In addition to the Wi-Fi module being included right here, um, the other thing that they've done is they've included a switch right here, which gives you the option of either using that PCI X4 expansion slot for some sort of external capture device or any kind of add-in that takes up to four lanes, um, or you can run a third M.2 drive. So whereas the Prime only supported two M.2 drives, both off of the CPU, this one has the exact same configuration on the CPU side, but it does offer the option of a third M.2 drive, which is really nice to have. And I, I will note that if you choose to add an M.2 drive into the M.2 underscore three slot, it will disable the PCIe expansion slot. So the way ASUS has designed that PLX chip, the switch will prioritize the storage drive in this case. Some, sometimes the vendor does it different. Sometimes they prioritize the expansion slots peripheral versus the M.2 drive. But in this case, uh, the priority goes to the, the M.2 drive. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, because if you go in, you let's say you plug in like an Elgato capture card down here, uh, like a 4K Elgato 60 or whatever, and then you go in and plug in like an M.2 drive here, you'll be wondering why is your Elgato drive showing up as not detected? Well, it's because it's disabled because the slot's disabled. So it's one or it's it's one or the other. You can't run both. Um, so that's just keep that in mind. And you, you still do get those two. PCIe X1 slots, so you still can run a 1080p capture card off of either of those, um, but you just can't run like a 4K 60 capture card, um, and you can't really run like 10 gigabit NICs off of this, so just keep that in mind. And then of course Wi-Fi and the, and the LAN are the same, and then the SATA implementation is exactly the same as the Prime. So that's going to be it for the Tough Gaming Plus, not a whole lot different here. Um, I will note that um, where the motherboard features a 20 gigabit USB-C on the back, that is going to be off of the chipset, regardless of which motherboard we're talking about. The way the way 20 gigabit ports are done, it, they're off of the chipset. They're not off the CPU. They're always going to be off of the chipset. And what they do is they take two two USB 3.2 Gen uh, Gen 2 and they team those together so you get a gen 2x2 and that's how you get a 20 gigabit port so moving on to the final motherboard then that's gonna we're gonna be looking at the strix the rog strix b650e e gaming wi-fi this one has an enormous name um but it's also the most expensive one on the b650 lineup and it is a b650e motherboard um, and because it is priced at 350 dollars it does include the debug postcode. Um, you can see, well, it's, it, you can see it in various pictures. It's on the upper right corner of the motherboard. You can see this one does have 
the 20 gigabit USB C on the back um, right above that Wi-Fi 6E antenna um, but that's that's off the chipset so if we take a look at the block diagram for the Strix B650E so this one is significantly different from the other two and it's also a lot more expensive uh, because it does feature the entire PCI-5 24 lane bus so with this one you get the 16 lanes which in the case of the Strix E they go to a splitter or a switch that has the you know the classic uh, 16 lane graphics card slot shared with another x16 physical graphics card slot but that but the second one is only wired for eight lanes so that's really common for crossfire and sli systems in the past however sli is completely dead and crossfire is rarely ever used nowadays um, but it is nice to have this x8 slot if you wanted to put in a second gpu and you wanted to like render uh, you, you know like DaVinci Studio or Adobe Premiere and and use the professional version so the paid version of those applications does actually scale with multiple GPUs so for for a kind of like production semi prosumer workstation on the cheap this motherboard is a good option for that reason because you can run multiple graphics cards off there you can also add additional storage drives with like a an NVMe add-in card um, to add like you know two drives to this slot for example so lots of connectivity options there so it's, it's nice to have this um, and then on top of that you also get another m.2 drive so this b650e motherboard features four m.2 drives so you know you got your primary one your secondary one both of them have their own set of dedicated 5.0 lanes directly to the cpu you get a third one that can that also goes to the cpu but it is sharing uh, lanes with the graphics cards or the graphics card and whatever would go in that second slot so I've kind of like given you guys the different scenarios for how that's done so it's either graphics card only or you know graphics card plus another graphics card or some additional NVMe add-in or just some peripheral is connected into that x8 slot in the middle and then you have an NVMe drive in the M.2 underscore three, um, or, you know, dual graphics cards, no NVMe, or, you know, both of the PCIe's are in use, but you're not using NVMe, or graphics card plus NVMe drive with nothing in the X8 slot. As soon as you populate that NVMe drive uh, in this, this slot in particular, that is going to force the graphics card to run at X8. That is a limitation of using the switch. So I, I wanted to just point that out. Because if somebody goes and plugs in an NVMe drive right here, this is, this is empty, but they'll be wondering why is their GPU at X8? That's because they're now in this situation. So I wanted to point that out because these are the technical details that uh, aren't really talked about that often you know and then people will troubleshoot why they're running into these problems and they don't really know why and well that's the reason why so it's a platform uh, behavior it's a limitation of the platform so moving on to the chipset so what this one is also different so the nice thing is they still provide the x4 expansion slot I like to see the x4 expansion slot um, even on the B650 motherboards, it's nice to have because it does allow you to add Thunderbolt 4 via an add-in card to this motherboard if you wanted. So it's really nice to see all these AM5-based motherboards have native support from these motherboard vendors for Thunderbolt. So it's really nice to see. Um, and then, of course, you have your final um, NVMe drive there, and they're not shared, so you have you can use both simultaneously just fine. That is the benefit of driving more things off of the CPU lanes. So, and then the 3.0 bus, Asus has done something different on this more premium flagship B650E motherboard. Um, what they've done is the Wi-Fi is now on the 3.0 bus. That's totally fine. Same thing with the 2.5 gig LAN. But what they've done is what we've seen uh, with MSI, where they've taken one 3.0 lane and they've essentially split it to provide two SATA ports with connectivity per one lane. So that is how they're able to get four SATA ports 
and still provide you that fourth NVMe drive. So uh, one thing to note is that the theoretical max throughput of these SATA drives, if all four of them are populated, or if like two of them that share that one lane, if those are populated, um, you know, if you're if you're trying to like write heavily to those two SATA drives, especially if they're NVMe or not NVMe, especially if they are SSD SATA drives, like the 2.5 inch, you know, legacy SATA drives, the the total throughput is probably gonna be a little bit bottlenecked, but I don't know if you'll ever even notice it. But it is one thing that is a key difference between this motherboard and the other two that we looked at. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of mini series and this deep dive look at the B650 and B650E motherboards from the different vendors. So this kind of concludes this mini series. And if you guys have any questions on a particular motherboard, if we're talking AM5, B650, B650E, or even X670 and X670E, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer it uh, when I have time. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And I hope you guys enjoy this content and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.